All right, students, uh, this video is going to show you how to calculate uh, the p-value for chi-square in Excel. Now, this is actually a pretty long process. It's so long to where it actually might actually be a little bit easier to just do it by hand. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, but if you have, like, massive amounts of data, like 1,500 uh, respondents, so it's going to be quicker just to do it this way. So what you're going to do, we're going to look at happy and health. If you remember from the last Excel video, we, were, we created a cross tab for happy and health, and we're going to calculate chi-square for that. So what we're going to do first off is we're going to copy these two variables and put them into a new sheet. We did that already. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a pivot table. Um, these two. And then I'm just going to put the table here and press OK. All right, so if you all remember, what you're going to do is you're going to put health in the columns and happy in the rows. Because health is our independent, happy is our dependent, and then health, we're going to calculate the values for that, so we just want the count. Now we want to get rid of the missing data, so we know that 0, 8, and 9 or blank are um, our uh, missing uh, values, and then for happy, um, our missing data is 8 and blank or 8 and 9. Okay. Now that we have that, we need to label these things. So we know that this is happy, very happy, pretty happy, and then not clear happy. Then we know the column is health, and then we know one is X, excellent, um, good, and then four. Let's expand all this stuff a little bit. So if we're trying to calculate the chi-square, we know that we need a couple things. We know we need uh, the observed frequencies and then the, the expected frequencies. Here we have the observed frequencies. So I'm not going to calculate, turn these into percentages. I'm just going to leave these as the observed frequencies. I'm going to put observed frequencies right above. And then what I need to do is I need to copy all this. So I need to copy all this, and then when I copy, Put that there, and then I'm going to put this a little bit below. So I'm just to say I'm going to put it at B14. I'm going to paste. I'm going to paste, paste special. And then I need to make sure that I paste as values, and then and then I'm good. Okay. Now that I have that, I'm going to get rid of this observed frequencies. I'm going to put uh, that. I'm going to put expected frequencies here. I have expected frequencies here, so I have happiness and health, the totals, happy health. Now what I need to do is I need to calculate, and like I said, it's kind of a tedious process, but I need to calculate the expected frequencies. And the way I'm going to go about doing that is I need to take everything that's not the total, so I don't want to get the row totals, I don't want to get the column totals, I don't want to get the end, I just want to get all the actual, uh, the actual frequencies in each cell, then I'm going to clear the content. So don't delete, because if you delete, you know, you might get rid of the entire rows, or you might get rid of the entire columns, or you might, get, you know, shift the cells left or up, and you don't want to do any of that. So you don't want to delete. What you want to do is you want to clear contents. So clear contents, and now so it made everything blank. Now what I also need to do is I need to calculate the expected frequencies. And if you remember what the formula for expected frequencies, it is the column total, so here we have, the, this is say for excellent, very happy, column total is 228, the row total is 321, and you divide it by 997. Now there's two ways to go about doing this. And the first way that you could do it is you could come over here, you press equal, then you can look at what the cell is. So we know this is uh, for E20, so you can do E20 times, um, I 17, and then we divide that by I 20. 
and then we would get a number, so we get 73.40 number, number, number. So that's how you get the expected frequency. The other way to do this is to just take the numbers and then put them in there instead of each cell. So you don't have to actually look at the cell. So for example, for excellent, pretty happy, I know that the column total is 228 and then the row total is 519. So what I could also do is I could just put equals 228 times 519 divided by, which I know the N is 997, and it would also calculate the expected frequency for me. So that's the way I'm going to do it because I just think it's a little bit faster. So I'm going to do equal to 28 times 157 divided by 997. I'm going to get the expected frequency here, and I'm just going to keep on doing this. Like I said, it's a bit tedious, but this is, for Excel, this is really the um, only way to go about doing this. All right, so qu quite a bit of stuff to do. It didn't take forever, but uh, you know, obviously, yes, this let's do this a little faster. So here, what we have are up here at the top, we have the observed frequencies. Here, we have the expected frequencies. So the frequency that we should expect to see, assuming there is no relationship between health and happiness. Okay. And then the last thing that we want to do is we need to get the p-value for chi-square. So like I said, um, this um, does not actually provide you with the actual chi-square value. It'll provide you with the p-value. Um, so you don't actually get um, um, the actual chi-square value. So, but it, it'll, it'll still work for determining whether or not you're going to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So I'm just going to put that there, and then here I'm going to put, um, the way you need to go about doing this is you need to put an equal sign, then you, I just do, like caps lock, chi test, so chi test, chi test, and then what we do is we're going to put this, and then what we need to do is go from E4 to H6. So E4, H6, comma. Then we come over here and we go from E17 to H19. Parentheses. And then this should give me the... Uh, P value for the chi square. Okay, so I got the P value for the chi square. Did it? Did I that right? Okay. 
Okay, so this is my p-value for uh, chi-squared test. After I got the um, observed frequencies, compared them to the expected frequencies. Now, um, I see 4.64. Now you might say to yourself, well, that p-value is relatively high, but I understand that you have an e negative 24, which means that you go 24 decimals back this way. So what we, Knowing that, we know that we have an incredibly, incredibly low p-value. So the, the p-value is so low, like I'm not even going to try to draw that out with like 24 decimals the other way. Um, we can pretty much reject the null hypothesis at the 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0 and the 0 0.001 alpha level. Like I said, it doesn't actually give you the chi-square value, um, but as long as you have the p-value, you can know whether or not you reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And in this situation, we would obviously reject the idea that uh, the two variables are not related in the population. 